So as you can tell, one of my drive belts is failing. So today I'm going to replace all of them. Um, as you heard, one of them is squeaking, and I believe it is the power steering, which is located on the left. Um, so since I need to replace the power steering, I'm just going to go ahead and replace all three. It's a pretty simple, pretty simple job. And uh, these were the original belts that were on the truck when I bought it a few years ago. So um, it's about time that I went ahead and just replaced them all. All right, so the first thing we're going to need to do is remove the factory skid plate. And I believe there are five bolts that hold it on. Um, four bolts for me is. I just found out that I'm missing one, but otherwise there should be five 12 millimeter bolts. And I would suggest hitting a couple of these a day or two before with PB Blaster or some sort of penetrating lubricant. Okay, now with the skid plate off, you can see it gives us quite a bit more room to work with to access some of the uh, some of the hardware we're going to need to remove to get these belts off. So first up, I'm going to start with the power steering belt that's located here on the left. And then I'm going to move on to the alternator belt, and then I'll remove the AC belt, which is located. Uh, down below. Okay, so the first bolt we're going to need to loosen is this top bolt right here, and that is a 14 millimeter. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but you'll need to have that pulley lined up, or one of the holes will allow you to get a deep socket in there. I just got lucky and everything was already lined up, but uh, I suppose you can get a wrench. You can get to that bolt um, from the backside with a wrench, but since that hole lined up perfectly for me, that's just what I'm using. And the next bolt we want to get to is the bolt for the tensioner, which you can access on the kind of the back side of the power steering pump on the left side. You can see it there, and that should also be a 14 millimeter. Okay, next up, you want to loosen the 14 millimeter that's just to the right of the pulley. Okay, now that we've loosened those three bolts, and uh, relieve some of the tension on on the power steering pump. Now you can go ahead and pull the belt off the pulleys. And there's no need to take off the clutch fan because you can work the belt around the fan itself. To remove it. Okay, now on to the alternator belt. And the alternator is gonna be the same procedure, there are going to be three bolts we'll need to loosen. The first one we're going to start with is this uh, pivot bolt. That's also a 14 millimeter. Okay, so from underneath the truck, looking at the alternator, we'll, the next thing we'll want to do is unbolt this 12 millimeter, the uh, locking nut here, and then and then on the top right of the screen, there's the 12 millimeter uh, bolt for the tensioner. We'll want to loosen that a little bit too to get the belt off. And once we push the alternator to the left a little bit, um, that allows us to pull the belt off. And we'll need to get the AC belt off first before we can remove the belt itself from around the fan like we did the power steering belt. So I'm gonna do that one next. Okay, so next up is the AC belt, and now would be a good time to replace the idler pulley if it's starting to uh, make any kind of noise or I'm just looking a little worn out. Um, I don't have one on hand at the moment, so I'm going to have to replace mine at another date. Just for the time being, I'm just going to replace the belt itself. And so you'll have the nut here on the pulley itself. That's kind of like a, that's the lock nut. And... And to the uh, lower right of that, the bolt for the tensioner. And so we'll uh, 
and those appear to be uh, 14 millimeter as well. Okay, now I've got that, I've got the pulley loosened and I've unhooked the belt from it, so now it's time to just pull it through the top. And just like the power steering belt, if we're patient enough, we can, we can, we can get this around the fan to pull it out. And obviously it would be a lot easier to just cut the belt itself, but we're gonna have, this is how we're gonna have to reinstall the replacement belt. belt and now we just need the alternator belt and here's just a little comparison of the new belt on the left and the old belt on the right as you can see the old belt on the right was starting to crack and uh, it feels really really dry so it was just a matter of time till this belt was probably gonna snap I know a lot of people prefer to use OEM and uh, they'd rather just go with the Toyota belts, but I went ahead and purchased a couple of Gates belts. I've used these on some of my other vehicles and they seem to hold up just fine compared to the OEM belts. Um, I'll put these part numbers in the description uh, along with the part numbers for the OEM belts if you prefer to use those. Now it's time to get the new belts on. Okay, as you can see, the belts are back on. Um, everything looks good. Um, I'll need to look up the uh, specs on how much slack these belts are supposed to have. Usually it's, you know, in between like a, you know, usually it's around a quarter of an inch, depending upon um, how long the belt is. Um, I'll also need to look up some of the torque specs for some of the hardware that I've tightened down. Um, you do want to make sure that you don't over tighten some of these because you could prematurely wear out the bearings. And, um, yeah, so I'll make sure to put all that stuff in the description uh, once I get that figured out. But I am going to but I'm gonna tighten everything down, start her up, make sure everything looks okay before I put the skid plate back on. But uh, otherwise, yeah, you'll find all that information in the uh, description along with links to the, uh, the belts that I used.